It's been almost two years since I first published my review of my current brew kettle, the Giga Wart from Northern Brewer, and I thought I'd give you an updated review now that I've been brewing on it for over two years. I'll discuss the pros and cons and how I think it compares to what else is on the market. Now let's start on the positive note, its size. The kettle has a max capacity of 4.4 gallons, which is perfect for making two to three gallons of beer. As an electric kettle, it doesn't take up a huge amount of space in my house. When it's empty, the kettle is lightweight, making it easy to move. Also due to its smaller size, it is perfect for smaller batches of beer. And using just a mesh bag, I can use it for all grain brewing. And if you aren't there yet, it works perfectly fine for extract brewing. Just a tip when adding sugar to a hot electric kettle, like extract, sugar, lactose, honey, just make sure to turn off the heating element and stir constantly while adding it, or it could scorch and burn the bottom of the kettle, and that's a nightmare to clean. Trust me from experience. As this happened to me the first time I added lactose to a beer and ended up ruining an entire batch of beer and making it taste like a burnt marshmallow, but not in the good time Gross. way. Comparing the Giga Wart to other products out there on the market, the only comparable kettle in terms of size is the Anvil Foundry 6.5 gallon. The system does come with a grain basket, its own immersion chiller, and the option to add a pump as an upgrade. The price is higher for the Anvil coming in at $423 with the pump or $349 without it. And comparing that to the Giga Wart, the Giga Wart can sometimes be priced somewhere between $209 and $299 depending on the time of year. Granted, it doesn't have any additional accessories. Additionally, most other all-in-one electric brew kettles are a 10 gallon size that are aimed to make five gallons of beer, such as the Claw Hammer system, the Brewzilla, the Grandfather, just to name a few and some of those require a 220 volt outlet. That's the same outlet used for a washer and dryer or to charge an electric vehicle. So you need to hire an electrician to install one for your home brewery and thus fixing your home brewery to a single location like a garage or outside. Switching to the negative side, let's talk about my first con relates to the heating element and even more specifically trying to use this kettle as a mash tun. Before I get started, it's important to note that I'm not using it 100% as intended or described on Northern Brewer's website. But if you're like me and want to do all grain brewing with an electric kettle on a small scale, as I said, this is only one of two options currently on the market. A side note, I do find it strange that all home brewing is fixed to a five gallon batch for beer recipes. If you look at things like pre-made kits, yeast packets, or kettles, but if you flip over to fermenters, kegs, and everything else, they have small and large. And I personally don't think at this point in my life I could drink five gallons of the same beer. So for me, I aim for smaller batches targeting 1.75 gallons to fill my small keg that fits inside my fridge and I use the Giga War as an all-in-one system. What I've experienced is that because the temperature probe and the heating element are on the bottom of the kettle, it can cause a temperature gradient during the mash rest. This means that the temperature probe could be reading one temperature, and the top of the mash could be a lower temperature, as much as five degrees in some extreme cases. Once the temperature probe determines that there's an issue, it will try to heat up the liquid and often overcompensate and overshoot the desired temperature range. And I have seen this with about a five degree temperature swing. If I, so if I set the mash for 154 degrees, it can drop down to as low as 149 degrees Fahrenheit. And then as it heats back up, it can overshoot that and hit 160 degrees. This is mainly due to the fact the system doesn't have a way to recirculate during the mash. The best option I found to overcome this is to stir the mash about every 10 minutes to mix the cold liquid at the top with the warmer liquid at the bottom. Now an easy solution would be to have a mesh stainless steel basket as an additional accessory for this kettle so the user could set up a pump and recirculate during the mash like most other systems. As this is how a lot of all-in-one systems work, but I've looked all over the internet for a third-party one that would fit this kettle and nothing matches the dimensions needed. I even personally tried to use an extra wide hot spider that I had on hand but that didn't work so if you have a suggestion for how to do this drop it down in the comment section below. The second issue related to the heating element I've experienced is trying to kettle sour a beer. This process requires that you pitch bacteria at an elevated temperature and maintain it somewhere between 90 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Trying to do this in a gig war actually has two problems that get in the way of doing this. First, the gig war has a built-in three and a half hour timer that will automatically turn off the kettle once it hits that time. And this makes sense if you're boiling wort for say three hours, as you probably would run the kettle dry. And I can totally see where that'd be an issue. But if you're trying to kettle sour, you're trying to maintain an elevated temperature for 24 or up to 72 hours to get to that desired pH range that you're looking for in that acidity. So in my experience, the only way to do this successfully is to heat up somewhere between 90 and 120, so like 100 degrees during a really hot time of year. So the heat loss is minimal to the outside environment. And check the temperature every few hours. If it needs to be reheated, turn the heat back on, 
to the desired temperature and then shut off the power. If you leave this on for three hours, I've noticed the temperature will drift past 120 degrees as the heating element just can't handle this. I've only ever tried a kettle sour once using the gig wart, and this was during an intense heat wave where the ambient temperature in my house is above 80 degrees. And even then, I never got the kettle sour to work when using good belly as a bacteria. And if you were to try this in the winter, you would need some kind of heat blanket to keep it warm. Comparing this to the ever popular claw hammer system that is all over the internet, and a lot of other brew tubers use. I've seen the homebrew challenge specifically kettle sour multiple times using that system with no problems. One of the major advantages that a gigawatt has or an electric kettle has compared to say propane is that there's zero risk for having the flame extinguished while heating up liquid for either strike, sparge, or boil. I remember when I used to use propane, numerous times I'd walk away for a few minutes to grab something and I'd come back and the flame would be completely blown out and propane would be just be spewing out of my tank. Even on a mildly windy day, I would need to find a way to block the wind to prevent this issue. However, the gigawatt simply plugs into any wall outlet and I often just run an extension cord from inside my garage to outside when it's for boiling. One minor note is that you want to make sure there's always liquid inside the gigawatt when you turn on the heating element or it'll cause an error and you need to press the reset button which is located on the bottom of the brew kettle. Now another thing that the system does well is heating up liquid for cleaning. I can add water to the kettle so it's a desired temp and once there, I can use that liquid to clean things like kegs, bottles, my immersion chiller, or anything else in my home brewery. Of course, this system doesn't have a cleaning place because you can't recycle the water, but I found it to be not too big of an issue when you're only cleaning a small amount of stuff. Another use for the Gigawart is I could use it as a hot liquor tank if you're trying to do a three vessel system and just sparge from the actual Gigawart itself. Now wrapping up to end, I want to answer the question of whether or not this system is worth it. Personally, if you're just getting into home brewing and want to start off with something small and that's electric, this is one of the cheaper options that's out there, if not the only option. If Northern Brewer were to add a few accessories like a brew basket or a recirculation pump, that would be awesome. And if you want to upgrade in the future, you could just use it as a hot liquor tank with some minor upgrades. If you're looking to brew on a bigger batch, this isn't the system for you, as the max capacity is 400 gallons, and typically I only brew about 3 gallons inside the kettle. If you want to see how I use this system for brewing the back setup, watch the video on the screen, and I hope to see you again soon.